morning and welcome to the tentatively named Tiny Needles Knits podcast. Um, my name is Jessica and I'm coming to you from a very cloudy, rainy Edinburgh on this Saturday morning. Um, and this is my second podcast episode. Um, hello to everyone who is new um, and hello to everyone who is old. <laughs> um, some of you may know me in person and know me obviously a little better than people who just know me through the videos, um, but some of you may be just knowing me through the internet for the first time, which is crazy. So hi, hello, it's really nice to hang out with you. Um, thank you for spending time uh, sitting and chatting about knitting with me or just listening to me chat about knitting. but. You know, please do chat back, uh, chat back in the comments if you have anything to say. So as this is only my second episode, I thought I would do a little bit of a getting to know you exercise um, through the medium of looking through my stash. Um, <laughs> you can probably tell a lot about a person as a knitter um, by like how they organise their stash, like what kind of things yarn they have. I really enjoy watching other people talking about their stash. Although I think a lot of the videos that I've been watching are people with very large stashes and I, while I do not have, you know, no stash, I do have this box <laughs> is my stash. It's not the most aesthetic box, um, I got it from home base, but it is plastic and it is airtight so it makes me feel safe from moths. Um, a couple of years ago, or maybe more than a couple of years ago, some period of time ago, I had a bit of a moth infestation um, in my knitting basket um, that I kept at home at my parents' house. Um, and I did just have everything in like a massive wicker basket and like all of my yarn was there. So it was basically like a big, and um, it's a very old house. So I think it was basically just a come and get it kind of situation for the moths. Um, and yeah, that was not great. Um, I was quite sad. Not so much about my stash yarn, like that was, you know, a bit sad, but like fine. But I had some projects in there that I worked on for a really long time and now had holes in them and kind of not, you know, like a lace piece that like you couldn't really uh, fix or I didn't have the skill to fix at that point in time. So in order to prevent that from happening, I have a lot of cedar blocks uh, with my woolens. I have a lot of uh, lavender packets and all of my stash yarn is kept in this box. I really like it. It's got two levels, um, which I think is really good for like having different kind of sections. So I've kind of roughly got a kind of like sock fingering portion, a kind of sport DK section, and then the bottom is anything that's kind of like bulkier or more of a worsted or just uh, if something's in like a large quantity, I guess it would go down there. But um, the only large quantity of yarn I had in my stash was the red alpaca that I used to make my Woodwardia sweater. So that is now gone. So it is one of my knitting goals for kind of the next like period of time to knit as much as possible from my stash. Lately I've been knitting more from my stash and I've just been finding it really satisfying um, to get through yarn that I've had like sometimes for, like 10 years and just not knowing what to do with and to find a project that really suits it and that I really enjoy knitting. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep doing that. Uh, and knit as much as possible from my stash and I guess try and make some space in this box for more yarn but I think mostly it's just the satisfaction of using what I have but there are some things in here that I'm a bit like ah, don't know what to do with so I thought perhaps chatting through them with you today uh, would give you a little insight into me as a knitter and would also give me an opportunity to think potentially about what projects I might make with these balls of yarn. So let's get cracking. I'm gonna start with the smallest weight um, which I would say is my kind of preferred 
size to knit in. I really like using very tiny needles, hence the tentative name of the podcast. Um, and I like making socks, they're just a really great portable project and they're easy and they can always find a home. I feel like if I don't like the sock, there's always someone who would just be blessed by a pair of hand knitted socks and is very happy to take them on. On top of my fingering weight section, I have some needles. These are <laughs> just a variety of needles that I picked up uh, through my knitting life. Um, there, I've got a set of 2.25, 3mm, 3.25, and 2.75. <laughs> like using number sizes is a lot easier double pointed needles which I used to use all the time and I don't use so much anymore. I've got the, I think they're the Addy something something, the little ones that are like, it's two kind of short uh, needles with a cable in the middle and then a third for knitting so I guess it's three. Addy Trios, are they called Addy Trios? I have those, I really like them. Uh, I find that my sock looks a lot neater and the process of knitting is just a lot more enjoyable but I have these DPNs still just in case um, and then some straight needles which like I honestly never use but they have sentimental value um, these three and a quarter millimeter pony question mark needles that I got from John Lewis were the beginning of my love for knitting with really tiny needles so I keep those for um, for emotional reasons really um, and then I also have some other like loose DPNs and kind of like cable needles and just various things in this which <laughs> I don't know if you can see that it's uh, my degree holder that I got when I graduated uh, from my undergraduate degree my degree is not in here it never was in here. I think it, we just got it so we could kind of pose with it and take pictures, but I use it to keep my knitting needles in. Uh, and here they are. They're just very loose. They're all random sizes. I'd have to use a, what are, what are they called? I'd have to use a needle gauge to figure out what any of them are. But again, they're there just in case I want to use them. I also have this, which is a crochet hook gauge which I just came with a needle gauge that I got and like it's fine well <laughs> I don't really use crochet hooks so I had it but I don't use it oh and there we go and then here are my what <laughs> my cat Graham is now sat right next to the tripod my tripod's really next to my desk and she's sat on my desk and she's just looking at me so it's like I have a little a little audience um Oh, she just got distracted by a bird. I'm not as interesting as a bird, I understand that. Um, before I was saying before I dropped them, these are my Addy trios. Do, 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 do. Um, they are great. I love them. These are my 2.75s and my 2.5s. I usually knit socks on 2.25s and with two for the cuffs, but I have these just in case. Uh, I want to use them and I bought those from Alter Knit Universe uh, which is a yarn shop owned by Kim who is great and uh, chats a lot about, um, about all sorts of things but um, about knitting and disability and living in a fat body um, and I just think she's great um, and she owns Alter Knit Universe in Bristol and I bought these online uh, from her at the beginning of the pandemic so the fingering weight slash like sock weight yarn that I have um, still in my stash is largely kind of scraps left over from other things. I've recently made a big ball. Um, I wound up a big ball using kind of magic uh, knot, magic knot, is that what it's called? That joins the kind of, it's like an invisible join uh, between loads of really tiny scraps and I plan on making like a sock tube with that. Uh, and I've never done a sock tube before or done like socks from a sock tube before so that should be really fun but there were some yarns that were like variegated is that the word? that were self-striping there were some self-striping yarns that I just didn't think would look right in a sock tube um, so I've kept them and I'm actually not quite sure what I'm going to do with them but I have these two which I think this is Pheasant from West Yorkshire Spinners 
and this one I don't know what it's called but it's also from West Yorkshire Spinners and as you can see there's not like this was a centre claw ball that has now collapsed uh, and this I wound up from some leftovers I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those to be honest but I'm holding on to them uh, just in case a project comes to mind um, another self striping that I have is this like rainbow self striping that I got from a charity shop um, and I also don't know what I'm going to do with it it's like a little thicker than these ones so I don't think they'd like work well together but um, I made like one sock out of this I didn't have enough for two socks but I had enough for one sock um, and then this is left over not enough for a second sock so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that um, and I also have this one which isn't self striping but it is variegated and it's pink and I use this to make some socks for my mum and this is the leftover uh, I bought this from Kathy's Knits and I cannot remember what the yarn is um, I quite liked it, I think it's I think it feels very similar to the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn which I think is maybe just a bit too slick for me at this point it kind of creates a very standardised fabric um, which I like I enjoy the colours of the West Yorkshire Spinners self striping, I think they're really nice, but the actual fabric that it creates I don't love to wear as socks, so that I often give them away, like I've just finished a pair and it's lovely, but like I probably will give it away because I just don't like wearing it. And then the last one I have is a full 100 grams that I got from um, Chandler's in North Berwick and I will be making a pair of socks with it. I was thinking potentially the mm, woodland socks, they call the woodland socks? lost in the woods, the ones with the little trees on them, uh, pie, I'm not sure, I'll put it in the thing, but I'm thinking about making those socks with this. Uh, so that's the last of my sock yarns, I also have this ball of like Jameson's, um, their four ply, uh, which I also I don't know what I'm going to do with. I think I bought it for, I was trying to make this like really intricate pair of Farrell socks and I made the cuffs and I still got the cuffs, I cast them off and I kept them but I just got really bored of the actual sock and I didn't like the kind of shape it was. So I just had this left over, I, this I like the texture of much more, it's like very sheepy, it's got a lot of like purchase um, so I would really like to make something with this but it's just so I think it's like 50 grams potentially 25 grams so it's so little yarn maybe I'll just make some really cute baby socks or something with it and that's it for the oh my god <laughs> and that's it for the sock yarn um the next section is kind of like I'm <laughs> The more I'm doing this, the more I'm like not 100% sure that I actually know what all the different weights of yarn are. But I've made a judgement. The thing is that most of the things in this box are so old that like I don't have the bands anymore, I don't know what they are. I'm just going on like feel alone. Um, I'm just kind of hoping for the best. Uh, or doing like a gauge swatch to kind of figure out what it might be before I start a project. Um, so let's see, what should we start with? Oh, I've got this, which is quite interesting. It's yellow, obviously. Um, <laughs> it is like a, again, like a very sheepy, it's got a lot of purchase to it. I, it's a little bit irregular. It was hand dyed and I got it at a, like a yarn show in, I want to say, I want to say Falmouth, but it's not Falmouth, it's another place that begins with an F. I think Farnham, potentially. Um, and I cannot remember, I mean it was like seven or eight years ago that I went and I bought loads. She was selling these kind of little eggs of coloured yarn um, and I just bought loads of them and for ages that was like, I had tons of them and I really enjoyed kind of playing with the colour uh, kind of when I was in my teens and just being introduced to the idea of colour work or like just playing with colour in a project um, but this this and I think a little bit of orange that I've got in the kind of bulky is all I have left from that so this is a lot of nice memories but again don't know what I'm going to do with it but can't get rid of it 
just holding on to it. Oh, no, you know what? I have one more. This is also from the eggs. It's a really nice colour, kind of like an off-green uh, colour, which I really, really like. And is quite similar in colour to this skein of Swan's Island uh, yarn. Swan's Island yarn. 100% washable merino. It's super wash, I think. Um, and it is sport weight it's a sport weight yarn um now i hadn't knit with sport weight yarn when i bought this i've got two in their skein and then one of the orange that i've caked up um so kind of enough for like a project ish like a small project um i hadn't knit with sport weight yarn when i bought this and i haven't knit with this yet but i recently did a test knit for gudrun johnson um for little noise from my cat. Uh, did a test knit for a project that at the time was called the Mayak Shawl because it was out of Mayak yarns but it now has a real name I can't remember what it is um, but that was out of sport weight. I really enjoyed it it was really nice it would kind of gave me a lot of the same satisfaction as like knitting with a fingering weight but it moved a lot faster and the, I really liked the texture of the particular yarn that I was using but also of like the fabric that the sport weight created so it's got me Having knit that has got me more excited about trying to find a project for these three. Um, and I bought these three on a trip to Rhode Island eight, nine years ago. And I still have it, so, um, or maybe it was like seven years ago, but it was a long period of time. It was my first time buying like expensive yarn. Like this was like, I've still got the tag on, it was $15 and I was like, a 16, 17 year old, that was huge. So I think probably that put me off of knitting with it for ages because it needed to be like the perfect thing because it was so expensive. Uh, but now <laughs> I've bought expensive yarn a few times or at least like this level of expensive yarn a few times since then. So I'm less afraid of making something with it. So hopefully that'll be a really good project soon. Um, oh, something else I had originally bought for a specific project is these two they're like baby cotton yarns I think it was potentially Rowan I'm not sure I bought this from a knit shop in not in Crail in where was it Pit and Ween I think in Pit and Ween which is on the like Fife Coast near St Andrews where I went to university and it was the only knit shop there. Now I'm not sure if this is entirely true, but I did definitely buy yarn from there at some point. Whether it was this, not 100% sure, but I think, again, I bought this, like, thinking I'd make some sort of project with it, and it never kind of materialised, but I think having two, like, these are definitely the same yarn in two different colours, and so I think having them together for a potential project is good, but again, it's like the two, like, two skeins of 50 grams, I'm like, what am I going to make with this? Maybe a hat? maybe something for a baby. I think probably originally I was like, it'll be something for a baby, but just never got around to doing it. So this is staying for sure. Um, and then the other things that I have that I think are sport weight, but I'm not hundred percent sure or like close, they're just a bit more than fingering, but not quite DK, um, are these three kind of random ones. This is just a little bit of black that I just think is probably useful to have in case I want to make like a band. It's like an alpaca blend. Uh, I made a hat for myself and then for my dad out of it um, and it's soft and nice and sometimes you just need a bit of a black stripe in something so I'm hanging on to that just in case. Uh, I have this grey which is again from a charity shop, uh, it's 100% wool, it's quite grippy, like it's got a texture to it, I really like it. I made the Grizzly socks out of most of it and then this is just what's left over but it's enough I think that it could be used kind of as an accent colour in a different project. Um, and then I also have this really great green. I love this colour, I think it's so fun. Um, of like a Rowan tweed again. And I just want to find something to use this in because I think it's such a great colour but I don't have anything to put it with. And it's 50 grams so Again, I think 50 grams of yarn is my Achilles heel. It's basically, this entire thing is 50 grams of yarn. 
Um, yeah, and that is the end of the box. The top box. This bit is finished. At the bottom there's not loads in here because, like I said, I don't really like to knit with uh, yarns that are super thick. Um, but I do have a few in here that I'm hanging on to, but I'm a little bit like, oh, do I need to keep them? Maybe they just need to go out into the world for someone else to find them. So the first one that I have is this red alpaca. It's left over from my Woodwardia sweater and again, 50 grams, it's 50 grams. Um, and I'm just holding on to it because I think I can find a project for it. I don't know what that project's gonna be. Maybe one day in the future it will make itself known to me. Maybe some little fingerling, fing, fingerling? <laughs> some fingerless gloves. It would, it's very very soft and I think it would be nice kind of on hands uh, or as like a tiny like a really tight cowl potentially. Um, but yes there's that one. There's this skein of sport weight again 50 grams <laughs> left over from my my actual. Um, I can't remember what the brand of this is but I bought it recently enough that I can probably put it in the screen if I can look it up and remember. Um, I really like this yarn, it's just got such a nice texture, like it's that perfect blend between soft and textured. I will be knitting with this again in a different colour potentially, so maybe I could buy some of the same in another colour to use with this for a project. Um, I also just really like this colour, I think it's really nice. Um, yeah, so that's another one. I have this tiny bit of Letty Lopi, which I use to make a hat, and I'm keeping because I really like it, and I don't know what anyone else would be able to do with it. Um, so I'm just hanging on to it. Again, maybe I should buy some more Letty Lopi in a different colour, and then use this in that project. Um, I also have this which I unraveled from a jumper that I bought in the charity shop um, and I used most of it to make a kind of colour work cardigan uh, which I really like and uh, was a really great project um, but again 50 grams left over it's probably about like a worsted weight yarn it's like two strands held double of uh, like a thinner yeah, and I think it was from a, like a machine knit thing, but it was quite chunky so I could unravel it. Um, but again, I don't know what to do with it and I don't have anything in my stash that like naturally pairs with it. I have this yarn which is left over from a hat project that I did. Um, I made one of the hats from, oh, I'm really not good at remembering pattern names, from, I think it's like Winter Knits is the book, uh, and I got the ebook and I made the hat from it and this is like a fingering alpaca held with a fingering with a four ply row and spun thing um they're both kind of a green and they look really nice together it was a really nice um project but again about this is probably like 30 grams left over don't know what to do with it i can't get rid of it because i like it um, I've only got two yarns left, but before I talk about those, I wanted to talk about this little jar, um, which I use for uh, darning. It's just a little, like, old jam jar with a rubber band uh, on it that you can put, I just use it to put a sock on, attach it with the rubber band, and inside I've got lots of different little weights and colours of yarn that I can use for the darning. So it's just a little neat kind of on the go darning situation that you at home could probably also make for free. So that's good, that's good. Darn your socks people. Um, I also keep extra project bags in here. This is an old tote bag. This is an ASOP bag I got in a charity shop. It's for socks, this is for a larger project. I've got two cedar blocks to keep 
keep those moths away, moth be gone, as well as a little packet of lavender to get rid of the moths. And then I have my two final yarns. I'd say this is like the biggest, this is the most yarn that I have of one single yarn and it's two kind of cakes of this very tweedy yarn of, it's all held, it's like how many colours is it? it's four strands of different colours of yarn and I got this from a charity shop on Harris near the Harris Tweed um, shop, near the Harris Tweed shop. So I think it's potentially safe to assume that this is kind of like off bits of yarn from Harris Tweed. And so that kind of like sentimentality and like that link to the really important aspect of kind of knitting history and Scottish knitting history, not knitting history, but like woolen history, the history of sheep in Scotland has made me want to keep it, but I don't know what to make with it. And it's also thick enough that I'm going to have to like go to like a five millimetre or a six millimetre needle, which I really hate knitting with. So that's why it's here. And I just don't know what to make with it. I think for a while I was gonna pair it with another yarn that I had and make like a vest. But then I used that other yarn in a, my colorwork cardigan. And I'm just not 100% sure what it is on its own. It's very tweedy, it's very sheepy. It might not be great next to skin, but it's like too much for a hat. It wouldn't be good as a cowl because it would be too close to your skin. Maybe it could make a very small shawl that could go kind of over a top and that wouldn't be so uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas of what I could do with this, because I'd really like to make something with it. It's like, you know, a nice link, but I don't know what to make. And it's still, like, it smells so sheepy and also a little bit like boat diesel from having been on my boat for a long time before I moved here. Um, yeah, but the last ball of yarn I have is a mixed ball that I caked up with all my scraps, all my bulky scraps. So I'd say this is kind of, mm, this is bulky. If <laughs> See, like you can just tell that I do not buy yarn in this category. Obviously I did because I've got this, but I very rarely buy yarn in this category, so I just don't even know what it's called. I like you're talking six millimeter needles with this guy. And it's just a lot of kind of like neutral, natural colours. It's like whites and creams and grey and that little bit of orange from the kind of uh hand dyed eggs of yarn and I think I'll probably make like a hat or um some sort of other one skein bulky project. I'd say this is probably somewhere between 75 and 100 grams. I haven't weighed it, but it's like, this definitely like a, it equals altogether a full skein of yarn. Um, so I could definitely do some sort of project with that. Yeah. And that's it. That's the end of my box. Um, <laughs> that's the end of my stash box. I'm going to be trying to use a lot of these yarns and projects over the next coming months um, leading up to Christmas and yeah so you'll probably see well hopefully you'll see a lot of these um, yarns pop up in new episodes of the podcast. Uh, my next episode is going to be finished objects heavy. Um, since we last spoke I have finished three and I'm coming up on a fourth of the whips that I showed you last time. Uh, just, you know, trying to finish everything up uh, before my new term starts. I'm starting uh, a PGDE on Monday um, in secondary English teaching. And one of the things that I've just really focused on getting done <laughs> before it starts is getting my knits in order. I think 
aside from cleaning the house and getting all of my stationery in order and doing the pre-reading, getting all of my projects in order has made me feel really good and like setting up projects to do so that I know that when I'm sitting watching lectures online I will always have this kind of simple project to be working on because it really helps me focus and pay attention to what is happening, especially online. I think it's good to have something to keep your hands busy and your brain focus. So yeah, uh, I'll be bringing those to you at some point in the future, hopefully I'll have some spare time after I start my course uh, just to film a little video for this channel. Um, if you would like to see that or see my videos in the future, please do hit the subscribe button and uh, like this video if you liked it and press the bell if you really really are keen and want to know when I post a new video, um, but if not, just thanks for coming, thank you for sitting and watching with me, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Bye! <laughs> Bye!